used to live near Oxford and I went to work at a, um, there was a lady who, who gave classes um, and I used to go and there, there were sort of ladies who made mice and things. And, and I was producing things that they thought were very strange, you know, like slightly sort of um, anxious looking people and, and um, anyway, think not, not nice things. <laughs> it, it grew out of that anyway. And then, um, you know, in the last four, four years, five years, I've been able to focus on doing this exclusively. I work for a very large management company. I was managing Jose Carreras, Kiri Tekanawa, sort of famous opera singers, who were all uh, in various shades quite tricky to deal with. So uh, I, I was organizing tours and concerts, and I uh, was always flying around the world. So I had a lot of opportunity to sort of grab time uh, to go and see things. Part of it was hiding from that world, of course. But I also very much enjoyed looking at, at other people's work. So, for example, the artist I, I love was, was um, Louise Bourgeois. And she, um, you know, she made weird things in cages and all sorts of things, it's sort of like an entrapment thing. And Anselm Kiefer was another artist who, whose work uh, sort of talked to me a lot. And I find that sort of work really, really inspiring. Some of it was, I was in Europe, some of it I was in places like Japan and China actually. Uh, you know, so in China I saw the, the, the lost army and all that stuff, you know, the, the buried people. Um, and in, in Japan I think they have an amazing sort of aesthetic, I think, there. So it sounds a little bit weird, but I think that all sort of seeps into you. Fortunately for me, I met up with um, Sandy Brown. She, she's a well-known ceramicist. She's quite an influential lady, I think. And I, I went over and saw, talked to her. And then I started doing some courses with her. And um, then um, that grew into me actually working in her studio, which is where I'm still actually working at the moment. And, um, you know, she's been very generous and, um, you know, as, as, and makes very interesting work. So, so it's, it's great being around someone who's, who's producing strange things as well. <laughs> I think my energy com comes obviously from the artists that inspire me and the... Um, Probably the sort of the, the psychological stuff that's going on as well. I think I, I, I have a feeling anyway that, that um, some of this fixation with heads is I can't remember there's there's a very smart word which stupidly I <laughs> has escaped me where you know, the, the, the need for a baby to recognize its mother's face is, is very uh, fundamental. I was born in the back of beyond, in a place called Graf Grafton, Australia, and um, shortly after I was born, I, when I say I wasn't, I hadn't just been born, I was, I was probably nine, ten months old, uh, my mother had to make a trip with my father to England, which in those days, by boat, was like a six month period. So I think perhaps because of the, the fact she'd been away, uh, had to make this journey, um, meant that um, my head fixation, if you like, um, grew from that period, perhaps. I don't know. I mean, this is, this is mumbo jumbo. This is all um, psycho bubble, isn't it? My first show. It would be nice to get that a bit lower. It's, it's a, it, yes, no, it's great to have an opportunity to sort of see a see a bit of a sort of totality of what you've been, what you're doing. I've got another show in Paris later in the year, uh, which is also a great opportunity. 
Uh, the, the man who, who uh, asked me to do the show wants me to do very big things, so I have to do like seven, five, seven foot high heads and small things like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still, um, I'm still working on that. So imagine somebody's walked into the exhibition, they stand in the middle of the room and they look around. What is the key thing you would want them to know about you, about your work, when they look at it? Well, that's a <laughs> deep and meaningful question. Um, that, I'm, that, that I'm trying to express myself. I hope they'd, I hope they'd, they'd get that. Um, I mean, there are obvious things. That, that piece there is called Crying Head, for example. So it's obviously a sort of sad, feeling, feeling sorry for yourself piece. Um, other things are much more um, uh, like torso is, 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 a, is just a strong, strong work, hopefully. But I hope people will, will sort of relate to things or, or some other things. Um, of course, they may well not, you know. They may think it's all ghastly and uh, <laughs> want to get out as quickly as possible. <laughs>He's a little anguished, I would say, because he's ended up on his head. Um, <clears throat> and he's, he's rather shocked. But um, it's, just, it's just a sort of um, feeling I had. that it, it, it expresses something that I, I wanted to make. And if someone were to come to this exhibition and not have the chance to meet you, what would they go away thinking about you? <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a terrible question. Uh, <laughs> Well, they, they'll either think, God, you know, what's wrong with this guy? Or, <laughs> or hopefully they may, some, a few of them may say, oh, I quite like, you know, I quite like that. And, but, but, you know, it's, it's they'll, they'll react the way they react. And the uh, ladies who used to make the mice alongside you in Oxford, what would they think if they saw you? Ghastly. Now? That would be appalled. <laughs> <laughs> they'd be running. <laughs> they'd be out of here in a shot. 